Hello, MGB here with a quick guide to correctly installing the new NAM37 package. Uh, we've seen that a number of users on the forums have had some troubles getting the new NAM37 installed and therefore I hope that this tutorial will be able to help such people. And here you can see in the downloads folder on my computer, I have already downloaded the network add-on mod setup zip file and like many zip and compressed files as a typical we will have to extract the contents of this before we can actually use them that's really quite simple on modern versions of Windows we just right mouse click on the file select this option extract tool and you can see the defaults perfectly fine don't need to worry about any of that just take a little moment while all those files get extracted despite having a fast computer it takes a while So with that done, as you can see, a new window has appeared, and obviously currently all these files are still within download. may not be ideal for you, but uh, anything works in terms of the location of these things. But here is the full package. This file here, you should read that before you go any further, pause this video, read that file, come back to me. If you don't, there are certain concepts you may not understand, and people who write readmes really don't like it when nobody reads them. Moving on from that, down here we have the main installer package itself and it's Network Add-on Mod Setup version 37.jar .jar basically means it's a Java file and that means that we would run and open it with an application called Java if you do not see the little coffee cup icon here then you probably need to install Java before going any further again full information on that is in the read first file so I do have Java installed on my machine so no such problems there so to run the installer we just simply double click this and up it pops very quickly agree click on the next tab at the top here are all the options that you can select just as the options page from the previous installers the most important one is probably to make sure you get the correct left hand or right hand drive controller if you're a right hand drive user no problems that will be set by default for you otherwise you will need to change that after that you can see these things will open up to reveal the various options within tick the ones you want and tick the ones you don't all very straightforward I'm not going to get into that in any big way because it's really far too time consuming at this point after that, we click on the next tab at the top, and you see that's going to install into my documents, SimCity 4, plugins under the Network Adder Mod folder, which is perfectly fine. Again, you shouldn't really be changing these defaults unless you have a very specific reason for doing so. In the Setup tab here at the top, there's nothing we actually need to click, so just move straight along to Install, and when we click Start Installation, it will start copying the files to the location here. Now, because I'm prepared and I didn't want you to wait for that, as you can see, I have already run the installer through to completion, so I can just happily close this. And here are all the files from the network add-on mod. So the next thing I want to get into is this file here, the 4GB patch. It's quite complicated to explain exactly what this does, uh, but in short, it will enable the SimCity 4 application to access more memory, and this is something that has become mandatory as of NAND 37. Without it, you are very likely to experience very poor performance or possibly even just straight out crashing before you can even open the game. If you're having those problems, almost certainly this is the area where you want to be looking. So running the patch itself is very straightforward. We're going to right mouse click it and select this option here, run as administrator. This is important because if you don't do it that way, you may find that, that Windows doesn't have the access required or the, the permissions required in order for this process to run successfully. So make sure that you use the admin option there. Up comes this little box asking us to select the executable. Executable is just another term for app or application. So here is a normal file browser window and what we have to do is find where SimCity 4 is installed. Now I know that some people will have problems with that so there's a foolproof method you can use to find it. We open computer, 
just bear in mind on your machine that may be named differently. We select the first and the main drive C you see here. This little icon here shows that Windows is installed on this drive. If you've installed SimCity 4 to another hard drive, you have to select that hard drive at this point, not C. You should know where you installed the files on your computer. I can help you with that. But having selected the correct drive, open it here. And then we see this little box here allows us to search the entire drive. So we're going to search for SimCity space for, space is very important, dot exe, and just hit enter at that point. As you can see, the computer is now searching my hard drive, trying to find that file. It doesn't matter which version of SimCity 4 you have or where you got it from, all of them use exactly the same name for the main application. So this process will work. It just might take longer or less, depending on how many files are on your hard drive and how quick it is able to access it. Okay, so it appears that it's just about found it now. As you see, unfortunately, because trying to be clever, it's found all these other things as well. But this is the one we want, simcity4.exe, and that's the location of it on my computer. Again, that will vary depending on the uh, uh, where you've obtained SimCity 4 from Steam, GOG, Origin, all installed them in different locations. But as long as you've got the right hard drive when you perform the search, it shall be found here. Right mouse click on that, open file location, and here we have a file manager window showing us SimCity 4. So what we can then do, click here, we can copy that path, click here, paste it, and again, hit enter, and there's the file we want, SimCity 4 exe. Remember, yours may not show the bits after the full stop for any of these file names. Windows by default has this uh, switched off. The main thing we're looking for is that it's called SimCity 4 exe or SimCity 4, that it's an application, and as you see the icon here, that's again very generic. So we know we've got the right file. Once you have, just click open. And there you go, you get this little message telling us that it's been correctly patched. And we can click OK, or we can patch another file if for some other reason you have something else on your system that requires it. But I'm just going to click OK. Another good indicator, so I know that it's actually done what it's supposed to do, and you might have seen this. It's created this new file, simcity4exe.backup. That is how I know for sure that this one has been patched. This is our original unpatched version in case we need to recover it for some reason. So the next component I want to talk about is the Traffic Simulator Configuration Tool. And there is a folder of the same name within the, the extracted files from the NAM installer. Inside of that we find tsct.gaar, it's another Java file, just double click that and that will run the actual tool itself. Here we need to change the language and once we've done that we need to tell it where we can find the traffic simulator in NAM. And to do that we go into the network add-on mod folder in plugins like so and it's folder 8 traffic simulator that we need to point it at. Click open. As you can see it's been able to load our existing files with the default settings if you will at which point you are free to uh, change and adjust anything as desired and that will then save over the original version for use the next time you run SimCity. So the last feature I want to cover is the controller compiler. Uh, again, this is something that would run by default with previous NAM installers. Uh, now this will need to be run separately if you wish to utilize it. Uh, the controller is basically what holds all the RUL code which allows the override networks and additional content of NAM to function correctly. And the reason that you would want to make a custom one is if you didn't need all of that code. So by default the installer now installs what we call the full compiler. That's all the code that you could possibly use if you used every single feature of the NAM. Um, I'm going to simplify this into just two categories for you. If you are using Real Highway, you probably don't need to run the controller compiler. If you are not using Real Highway, 
you really should run the controller compiler because it's going to make a huge difference to the startup times of your game and possibly even the performance when you're running the game as well. And this is all code that if you're not using the features, you simply do not need. So how do we go about this? First, we double click on the controller compiler folder. Here you see a number of options. I'm just going to bring up as well so we can see it properly the network add mod controller file within plugins which is located here so again you see this is a java file jar we can just run this java file and ignore everything else there and up comes the controller compiler and it's asking us for an input an output and to tell it the driving side we're using so make sure right hand drive is selected again it's very important to get this correct or you will find it into all sorts of problems we can copy this path because our output will be where the controller compiler exists in NAM 37 you might want to archive this file before running this in case you ever want to return to the full installer the input, if we open the network adder mod and controller folder where the controller compiler is, so again, I'm going to copy that path by doing it this way. It makes our life easier. I'm having to use control and V to paste because there's no right mouse click option. You can, of course, choose to browse using the usual file manager. But it's important that we take it to this controller subfolder or it won't find what we needed to. So now, like with the NAM installer itself, we have all these different options. Now, you can tweak them all, but I'm just going to simply switch real highway mod off and leave everything else behind. So double check that we've got these correct. Make a copy, like so just in case there's a problem and click start so it knows this file exists now we'll go through all the bits of code we need but not the real highway and of course it will be different depending on how you've customized it there we go so if I take the old file and we'll just change the name of it to old Use me a new keyboard and then we can compare the difference the original full controller is 281 megabytes and more the new one without the real highway code just 24 and like I said that is going to make a huge difference if you are not using real highway with NAM 37 so I highly recommend that you consider using this feature just very quickly, we'll point out that most of the other contents within the Network Add-on Mod extracted files are related to various readmes and documentations that have accumulated over the years, and uh, it would be a good idea for most users to acclimatize themselves with that at some point, so bear in mind where they are. But in terms of all the, the, the main features you will need in order to get the Network Add-on Mod running, or running optimally, uh, we've already been through all of those in this video and I sincerely hope that, that people find installing NAM37 to be a lot easier with this guide. Thank you.